Greetings and welcome to a new video about three phase rectifying circuits. In this example, we will look at the RL load. And in the previous example, we have seen the resistive load, so we extend this now to the series RL load. Of course, we will see that step by step in our calculations and verify everything in the MATLAB simulating simulations. Okay, this is our star connected source again. The balance are shown here. And here we have the resistor and the inductor in series, and also the balance are shown here. This is the same resistor value as we have seen in the previous example of the three phase rectifier. Now we have added the inductor of 10 millihenries. And we have again our six diode configuration for our full wave three phase rectification. Again, we'd like to calculate these values for this example. Again, the waveform here, which depicts our line to line voltages. And this is the line to line voltage what we have at the output. Okay, let's go. To the calculations we know that we need to first the average voltage now for the average voltage we need to look at the line to line voltage that means we also need to have the peak value here in our sine expression so we go from the phase voltage expression to the line to line voltage expression which is now vmll this is by the way only valid between pi over 3 radians up to 3 pi 2 pi over 3 radians and now the formula for the uh, peak peak or the peak value of the line to line voltage is given by the square root of 3 times the phase voltage. We know the phase voltage, so we can calculate it will be then 679 volts. Now, this is the general formula for calculating the uh, average value of the uh, average value of the output uh, voltage or the load voltage. In this case, we know that our period has decreased from 2 pi to pi over 3, so that's why we have this here. We integrate from pi over 3 to 2 pi over 3 of this expression when you substitute now in here in general form you get now this expression we have also seen this in the previous example now when you now substitute this value in here what we have calculated here 679 and then you get here 648.4 volts this is the average load voltage for this case the average load current can be calculated using just ohm's law so you just take this value and then divide it by 50 you get now 12.8 97 amps now in this case we have an inductor that means we have an impedance so the load voltage and load current must be treated using Fourier series so we need to look at the three phase full wave rectified sinusoidal load voltage uh, across this voltage across this uh, impedance I mean and then we need to express that in Fourier series and the Fourier series consists of DC terms and also the harmonics which are only multiple of sixth harmonics so the expression is shown here. This is now the load voltage expression is equal to the DC value or the average value plus the harmonics here. You see here only the 6th, the 12th, 18th, etc. So it goes up by 6. And this is the expression mathematical form. We need to calculate actually only these amplitudes for this cosine expression. And here you know, we already know that also that the average value is given by this expression. We have seen it in example, uh, I mean the question A. And this is the expression for the amplitude of the harmonics. You can see that 6 times the line to line voltage over the pi times the n squared minus 1 in this case. And the fundamental frequency here in this case is 120 pi because that's actually here the source voltages. Okay, now the load current can then be expressed using superposition, taking each frequency component separately and combining the results. So we know that for each voltage, we can take the average value and also the harmonics amplitudes, and we can also put it in the formula here using Ohm's law and then calculate the specific current. And impedance here is given by this expression because we have a resistor in the inductor here in this load. Now this is a table which you can generate. You can see here the n, which is going from 0, 6, 12, and 18. I only put this here. You can also go up to 24, etc. But at some point, they are not contributing that much. The frequency here is first 0, because that's DC, and then 360 hertz. Why? Because that's 6 times 60, and then 12 times 60, and then 18 times 60. These are the uh, frequencies and radians per second. This is now the so these are the values actually for the load voltage components. Now, the first one is just our average load voltage. And the second one here is our sixth harmonic. You can see that. So 37.05. How do we calculate that? You go to this formula. You do six times the VMLL, which is 679. 
over pi times and you do here 6 squared minus 1 of course in the parentheses and you get this value in a similar form for this and for that you change just only the n the RMS values are calculated really straightforward for the average value take it as this but for the pure sine frequency components you divide each term here by a square root of 2 now in order to use also the RMS current we need to use Ohm's law as said here so we can say I O uh, so the index n can be calculated using this value divided by the impedance and you get this one which is actually our average load current and a similar form you get this one that one and that one and also the rms current so the load currents can be calculated by taking this and then divided by a square root of two so each frequency part needs to be divided by a square root of two then we can have the rms load voltage by taking this and put it in this formula. Of course, we have more terms, but I have only the average, the sixth, the twelfth, and eighteenth harmonic here. But if you want to have more accuracy, you can add up, but they don't really contribute that much because if you see the values here, it is now almost 2.84. Compared to this one, it is almost nothing. So we can actually say this is now close to what we uh, should have also in the in limit case. So it is then 648.9. The RMS load current can be then calculated using the column here. So given in the, uh, this part, that is again using the similar formula, average part, the 6th harmonic, 12th harmonic, 18th harmonic, so you add them up. And you actually get almost exact same as this one, so because these uh, parts are not really contributing that much, so the result will be here 12.97. The RMS source current is again calculated using this formula. We have seen it also in the previous example, and that will give you 10.59 amps. Okay. Now we have now the most of the parts here, so only part left is the absorbed power and the power factor. So we move on, let's collect here the value we just determined. Now the absorbed power is given by this, so the IO RMS, so the load current RMS squared times R. We know that and we calculate that you get now here 8411 watts. The power factor is defined as the load power over the apparent power, so the absorbed power over the apparent power. Apparent power is given by this one for three phase system, so three times the source voltage RMS times the source current RMS. Source voltage RMS is just this 392 over square root of 2, that will give us 277.2 volts approximately. And we know that IS RMS is 10.59, so we can just substitute this, you get now 8761 volt amperes. Now put that in this formula, you get almost 0 0.96 as your power factor. Okay, collect everything here and now look at the simulation result. This is now the circuit in the Simulink uh, using Simscape elements. You see here the six diodes, the three sources, and also the display here for later. And also here the scope I mean for uh, later for the graphs and also here the displays. And let's go one by one. This is now our average load voltage. You see here 649.2. Close to what we have calculated. This is now the average load current, 12.96. Again, close to what we have calculated. And this is the RMS load voltage, 648.8. Also very close to what we have calculated. And this is the RMS load current here, 12.97. In this case, exactly as we have calculated. Okay, now, then this is done. And you also see that the RMS current here, RMS source current is 10.59, actually, also as we have calculated. Which also see here is the RMS force current. We haven't uh, taken that here in the list, but that's 277.1 here, and we had 277.2 approximately. So that's also verified. So let's now go to the plot for this circuit. You see here the source voltages VA, red one, VB for the green one, and VC. So these are the three phase voltages. And this is the load voltage. And you can see the load voltage again expressed like so. That was actually the value here. If you zoom in here, you can see that the peak value here is indeed 679 volts. And this is now the waveform, the uh, yellow one for our load current. You see there is a transient part and then it settles down and then has a steady state region. This was not the case for the resistive load. So for the inductor, it re requires some time and then reaches some steady state value. And also the peak peak values here given in this case the peak peak ripple for our load voltage I mean load current is one point let's say 45 amps 
All right, this was our example considering the three phase rectifier having an resistive and inductive load, so the series RL load. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.